We have seven different things your Macs can do right now that you probably didn't know about. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. So today we have a fun one, and now I do these training ones from time to time, but I have seven different things that your Macs can do that you probably don't know about. Generally, I'm on Sequoia, so you wanna be up to that level probably to do some of these things. But I'm telling you, you may, you may, you're probably gonna know a couple of them, but you may not know all of these, and that's the fun of these kind of videos. I've made videos like this in the past too, where, and I'll put some in the description, the video description so you can check them out, but I probably have 50 different ones with these little tricks and tips of Mac OS. So if you use Mac OS and a Mac, you may wanna watch some of those. But today we got seven kind of ones for the times, and uh, without further ado, let's get into it. This first one can be used a lot of different ways. I'm just gonna show you one way to use it. Let's say you're planning a trip and you're bringing your parents along or something, and you're gonna to go to a major city, and you wanna do you wanna walk around a lot, but you don't wanna be walking like giant mountains and stuff, right? Here's a good trick here. So here I am on Maps. Take a look at my screen here. I actually recently went over here. This is Porto, in um, Porto, Portugal, actually, and I went here recently, and I know that there's a huge hill here. But what you wanna do here, so I'm just gonna show you the town here, but then you wanna go up to just the normal map view. And you can see, like, obviously, you can do this, you can use this for trails, you can use it for hiking, but you can also use it for cities. That's what I'm going to show you here. So all you have to do, basically, is you, you basically pick a spot on the map that you're going to start your walk from, and you hold down the button on your mouse, and you're going to see, like, a little, little pin there comes up. Then down here, you're going to see three little dots. You click on this and go down to Create Custom Route right here. You're going to see that there. Now, see up here what it did? It created this little custom route map, and that doesn't really make a difference yet. But what you're going to see, so don't, don't click on that, but you'll see it up here in the corner up here. But what you want to do is then you want to plot your, your, your kind of course here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my mouse, click there. Just one time, you can see how it plotted that. I'm going to go up here, click again. So it's going to keep plotting this. This is the kind of the walk that I'm going to go on with my parents. And what I want to see, and I'll show you in a second here. Let me just go up here. So we're going to walk all the way up here. We're going to keep going, and I'm going to see if this is actually something they can actually do. So after I'm done here with this whole plotting, this whole course here, I'm going to look over here. It tells me a lot of good information. It tells me it's 0.4 miles. It's going to take 11 minutes, but this is the problem. See, it's 179 feet uphill. You can see it right there. So you can do this with a lot of different things. You can kind of see if it's going to be completely uphill, like up a mountain, and completely downhill, and things like that, just if you're going to be going on walks with older people, or just if you're doing like a hiking trail. Can you imagine if you're doing a major one? Maybe it's 2,000 feet up, and you just can't do that. Plus, it gives you how long it's going to take, which is really cool, 11 minutes. It tells you it's up 179 and down zero. And you can actually go in here. You can say, if I was going to come the other way, let's say I want to go back, um, you can click this right here, and you can see obviously just changes it. It says it's 179 feet downhill because you're going to be going from up here all the way down. You can actually click this too as well right here. And this basically means if you're going to go in, going there and back. So actually, I started at I started up here actually, but if we're going to be going downhill and then back uphill, it's going to take me 20 minutes, and it tells you how to feet up and the feet down. But you can imagine if you did a different route, it would have different up and downs in there. So I think this is kind of cool, right? So if you want to know how long it's going to take to plot any type of hike that you actually do, whether it's in a city or not, and you're bringing people that may not be able to go up hills and stuff, this is a great option. Okay, for this next one, you wanna be on the most current version of Sequoia just to do this to make sure you have Apple Intelligence enabled. Just make sure that's all enabled and you'll get this actually. So look at my screen. So here I am in photos and I have a picture of a tiger here. And you can do this with any picture. It can be a town, a bridge or anything. And you just have a picture. Now this can be, in, and just keep this in mind, it can be in photos or you can actually use this in Finder or, or preview, I'm sorry, image preview will work as well. So if I have the image up here, you can see it's sitting here in photos. All I gotta do is I, if I go up here to the, the Siri icon, see it up here? I'm gonna click on the Siri icon. I don't know if you can see my clicker, it's right there. I'm gonna click on this and I'm gonna say, um, you know, in this picture, what type of a tiger is this, all right? Then I'm gonna go ahead and click enter. Now watch what happens, watch what it does here. So after it clicks, you click enter here, it's gonna think about a second. It's gonna to say to answer this, I should need to send the photo to chat GPT, which it's gonna do, and I'll send it. So you have to give it, it's okay to send it over to them. I'm gonna click send, and then what happens basically in a quick, it's gonna take a couple seconds. I'm on an M1 Mac here. This is a Bengal tiger known for its distinctive orange and black coat. So it tells you it's a Bengal tiger. Now you can use this though, I mean, obviously that was a simple example, but you can use this for cities, like what city is this or what body of water is this? And you can ask it all different questions on the pictures, which you actually have in photos or in preview, which I thought was kind of cool. So you can get a lot of information from photos. Let's say you take a photo of something and you want to know a little bit about a church or something. You can try it here. ChatGP will look at the actual image report back to you. And again, I know people know this is available, but just showing you how easy it is once it's set up here, that's kind of the, the main point of this is just to show people, get people start using it because I, they know it's there, but a lot of times they just don't know how to use it. 
Okay, this next one's another one that you probably have seen before, but are you sure you know how to use it? So I'm just gonna show you really quickly. Let's say you're on Mac Rumors or another website and you have all those annoying ads everywhere. You can just get rid of them, and I think people know this, but they may not know how to use it. So here we go. Here's Mac Rumors right here. It's so simple, and a couple things you wanna note here. So all you have to do is when you're on a website, see the icon up here? It's right there, so here's the URL, and then right over here you can see this little kind of icon. It looks like a box with two lines. Click on that. Then what you want to do is click Hide Distracting Items. See it right there? So I'm going to click that, and then I'm going to click OK. All right? So now what you do is anything that's distracting you, let's say this ad distracts me, I'm going to click on it, and look at it, it just vanished away. I'm going to scroll down. I hate this ad. I'm going to click that. It's going to get rid of that as well. So you can go through the whole website and just get rid of all these ads and stuff. Let's say, now the reason for this, I'm going to get into this in a second, but let's say you're doing like a video or you want to you know, take a screenshot of the website and you want to show someone some information, but you want all the ads sitting there, right? Or if you're doing a video, like I said, on YouTube, you don't want all the ads, you can go ahead and just remove them like this. And you can remove them from all in here. Now, this is not an ad blocker number one because realistically if you refresh this or you come back the ads will probably come back I think Apple had to work something out but again it's good for if you're gonna be on a page for a long time like this has got tons of stuff look as I scroll down there's tons of stuff in here that you want to remove and if you're gonna be on this page for a long time you don't want those ads this is a good option or if you're gonna be taking screenshots the one thing you got to remember though is before you actually so if I click on this it's gonna get rid of the information as well so when I'm done with the hidden my hidden hidden items of when I want to stop getting rid of them up here at the top it says done see it up here right there you want to click done because if I was to click on anything else, it would remove it. Now I'm fine. Now it's back to a normal website. All, everything is gone that I clicked on, and I can sit there and browse for a long time on it. But if you think of other ideas for this, I mean, again, if I refresh this, I think everything will come back. Let me just try it right here. It's kind of annoying, obviously. So obviously the boxes are here. Nothing's coming in yet. Well, there it goes. So you see the idea. So it is not an ad blocker, but it is good for specific reasons. Okay, for this next one, this is just something, again, that most people know that's there, but they don't know how to use it, and it really helps a lot of people out. So take a look at my screen. So there's a lot of websites like this. Like, let's say you're searching in Google, and the text is really small. Other websites, it's fine, but some sites, it's just too small, like Google searches and stuff like this. So what I recommend doing is, while you're in Safari, you have to be in Safari now, go up to Safari, and you click on Safari here, and then click Settings. Now make sure you're not over here in Settings, but make sure you're in Safari. Click Settings. All right, so over here, it's gonna say, I'm gonna go all the way down here to page zoom. You can see it already have it highlighted. And then I'm gonna to go to the website that I'm on right now, which is Google. See it right here? So I'm gonna click on Google. So this is what Google is. So when I search Google, I want bigger listings so I can see them easily, but then I don't want it to affect any of the other websites, like, you know, obviously like sports sites. I want, they can stay the same, but Google searches, I need a bigger text over here. So all I gotta do is go over here, click on Google, because that's the site I'm on. Now watch what happens. I click on this. I click 115, I click it, and look at it got bigger, right? I'm gonna go down over here, I said 125, 125%, click it. Now it's really big. So now what I can do is I can just kind of obviously you know, move this over. And now when I'm searching Google, I get all these big listings because I can see it very easily. But when I click on other websites, it's not gonna affect the text on the entire computer. So if you go to other things or you're doing your, you know, everything else on your computer, the text is not gonna be giant. It's only gonna be for those Google searches, which I think is kind of a cool idea. And you can apply that to any website you need to. Okay, for the next one, this is very similar. It's something that has been out there for a while and you just probably don't know how to use it. So here's number one. So let's say you go to a website and I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you two of them because I know I'm gonna get all these complaints in there. Why Fox News, why CNN? So I'm doing both of them. I got smart because people are crazy out there. So here we go. So here's Fox News, but you've been on sites like this where obviously the video just starts playing and it like, you know, you're just trying to look at some news and all of a sudden a video just starts playing in the background. And again, CNN's the same thing over here. If you scroll down, this says unable to load video, but let me just see, well, I'm not gonna reload it, but there's a video Video that plays here as well and a lot of times they have videos in here that just start playing as well so either e either case you can use here so what you want to do is you want to be on the website like this and all you got to do really simply is just go up to Safari again and go to settings but make sure it's Safari settings and this time what you want to do is you want to go to auto play right here in this list over here and then find the website over here so we're gonna find Fox News and then what you want to do is stop media with sound well we don't want to do that we want to say never uh, never auto play right there see it right there so I'm gonna click never auto play and then we can go ahead and shut this down. So what happens now is if you actually reload this, you're gonna see what happens. So now what happens is, obviously this is usually a video that starts playing and it starts annoying you with some sound and stuff, but now it's not gonna do that. So obviously it's not gonna take your resources. So now this site has no moving videos. It's gonna have some pictures that can float around, obviously. It can change pictures, but it can't do the live video. And, uh, and then there you go. So you never have to worry about that sound coming out. I remember when I was, you know, if you're at work or in the office or something, you want to check the news really quickly and all of a sudden something comes screaming out at you. It's a good way to get rid of that as well, but I recommend not doing it at work. 
Okay, this next one's something that annoys a lot of people because they don't know it exists, and you can actually change it. So let me just explain what I mean here. So let's say you have two windows, and this is not what I'm talking about at first, but at first, you know, if you if you hover over this green bubble, it gives you, you know, where you can actually put the window. So, I mean, just to show you really quickly, and this is not what I'm talking about, though. So right here, you hover over this. I'm going to click over here, so the window's going to go on this side. I'm going to hover over the green over here. Just hover over it. Don't click on it. I'm going to move the other window over here. Like, a lot of people say to me, well, there's a, there's a space here. See that space? I don't know if you can see it in between there. It's right in there. It's also around the outside and the top and the bottom. So it doesn't fill the whole screen. So it doesn't give you all the real estate. Now, if you're dealing with a really small screen, even like a couple of, you know, a little bit on each edge makes a big difference because your content's not there. And, and people say, well, why is it doing that? Why can't I get the stuff to, to merge directly into each other? And you can do that. So what you want to do is you want to go into system settings right here. You can see it. And then desktop and dock right there. See it right there. It's going to be up here. Scroll down all the way down here to Windows. You can see Windows right here. And then all the way down, let's just see here. It says right here, Tiled Windows Have Margin. See it right there? So it's it's always selected by default. But watch what happens. See by behind here, this little margin down here. Actually, now what happens if I uncheck that? Look at that. Let me just go ahead and minimize this. Now all the margins are gone. It uses the full screen there. Whoops. It uses the full screen. So there's no little, like, you know, a centi couple centimeters in between here. There's no centimeters on the side. So when you actually, you know, move everything together in a tiled window environment and you want to snap everything together, it's not going to leave that little bit of space there, which is actually great because it uses your entire screen. I just think it's something most people don't know about, but it's in there. Okay, this final one's a really quick one, but a lot of people that are perfectionists, they don't like having a ton of things up on their menu bar, especially if you have a small screen, like a 14-inch or a 13-inch Mac or something. This screen's not going to be that noticeable, but there are people out there like that. So take a look at my screen. Up here, you can see the data, right? I have a whole bunch of other icons, but let's just pretend like you don't want to have all this, you know, you want to keep this minimal. Well, basically, see the date right there? It says Wednesday, January 15th. I don't want Wednesday there because I know January 15th. That's all I want is January 15th. I don't need Wednesday on there because it's taking up that valuable space. Now, trust me, there's people that care about this thing. All you got to do is go into Control Center right here. See it right here? Well, first go into your settings. Click on Control Center right here. And then what you want to do is you want to scroll all the way down to Clock, Clock Options right here. And very easily, what you want to do is, let me just see here, if I can even find it in here, right here. Show the day of the week. So I'm going to uncheck that. See what happens up here. Let me just check it again. And let me uncheck it. It removes it up there. You can see it up there. So basically it's gone and you have a clean, clean Mac. All right, so we're going to wrap it up. I know those last ones weren't the best or whatever, but they're in there. I like to keep it to like six or seven of these things so you can actually absorb them and learn them and stuff like that. So I make these from time to time. Let me know in the comments if you guys knew of all these, if you didn't know of one of them, or at least two of them maybe. I know that these are some new features coming out and it's more of just a learning curve and stuff. But anyways, post in the comments if you like these things from time to time for my channel. And we will talk to you in the next one. I love making videos. And I think the next one's going to be coming out, I believe, uh, let me just think, well, this one's going to post, and then I think we're going to have one on Saturday, which is the Apple News. So definitely stay tuned for that. That's a longer video where I go through all the news, a whole bunch of Apple sales as well. So subscribe for that one as well coming up, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.